All right, so let's do this. This is the top 20 of Brian Drake's top 100 games of all time. I've been excited about getting to this because let's be honest, even though I kind of chided someone for mentioning that anything above 10 is not really a good game, it's these are the games though that are my favorite games, are these top 20 games. So 20 games, best of all time. I'm excited about this. I've had a blast doing this list. It's been a lot of work kind of compiling and coming up with it. And, and there are certain things that I would, you could probably pick me apart. And I would say, okay, yeah, in that circumstance, that game would be higher. And in this circumstance, that game would be lower. And, oh yeah, I totally just forgot about that game. Shipwreck Arcana should be on this list. Totally forgot about it. It's one of the best deduction games around. Should be on the list. Detective 1940, whatever it's called, should be on this list. Totally forgot about it when I was making it, um, when I actually sent the list over. So those are two. I'm sure there'll be more things that come to mind. But let's dive in right now. Let's get going with number 20. Number 20 is a Railroad Revolution. It is a worker placement game in which the different color meeples that you use will grant you a different power, whether it's a cheaper benefit when laying track or using the Union Pacific or using uh, the, the Telegram, Western, whatever it's called, Western Union, or whether it's uh, you know putting stations out there on the board. The different color meeples will give you a different uh, benefit, and I love that. It's just such a good game. Like I loved it before the Railroad Evolution expansion. Loved it so much. But uh, with the expansion, it really tightens up some loose ends, and it's just so good. Railroad Revolution is one of my favorite games of all time. It is number 20. It's one of my favorite railroad games because it does different things. It is a worker placement game based on the railroad versus a train game, but it still has that wonderful theme. The Wild West, the art looks good. The colors are good. The boards are nice. It's just a really solid game. Go and get Railroad Revolution. That is what's your game. Uh, fantastic game. Number 20. Number 19 is Just One. This is a fantastic party game. It is a game in which you are all working together collectively to win, uh, kind of like the peg game, you know, Ignoramus and all that sort of stuff. You are coming up with a single word clue to give, write down and give the person guessing a single word from a card. They get a card with one, two, three, four, five different words. They will say, okay, I want to do number three. They don't look at it. Everyone sees that word. Everyone then comes up with a one-word clue to show them to help them guess it. Well, that sounds easy. However, before you show the person, you all look at each other's clues, and if anybody wrote down the same clue, you have to erase it, which means you could get something like, uh, the word could be chocolate, and people have written down milk and Dutch and uh, you know Swiss or whatever, and if two people write down the word Swiss or uh, French or hot, you would erase it, and you might only be left with Dutch, which your natural answer is going to be wooden shoes, right? I mean, that's, that's obviously what's going to happen. So, uh, Just One's a fantastic party game. Number 19, Just One. Number 18 is also, I don't know how I keep doing this, but it's also a party game, but it's a game, and I'm not even the biggest party game fan, but this is a game because it's funny. My friend Andy and I played this in high school before the game was ever invented. We played this back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on the way to different uh, events. And this is Blockbuster. It's a game all about movie knowledge, movie trivia. The first round is the lightning round. You get a clue and you go back and forth, bam, 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 back and forth, naming movies based on X or whatever it is, whatever the clue is. You know, movies featuring dogs, movies featuring uh, based in New York, whatever it is. And you'll go back and forth until someone misses it. And that person misses it, then you go into a round in which you have, you get three movies that you're trying to get your team to guess. One is with a tagline, one is with a single word, and one with a, is with charades. Love it. It's simple. It's dumb, but it's so much fun. That is Blockbuster. Number 18. Number 17. Here it is. You've been waiting for it since Nevada City three videos ago. Number 17 is Great Western Trail. It is just so good. It is a worker placement, kind of, it's more along worker move along a trail game in which you're getting cattle and you're moving them up and you're trading cattle and you can sell cattle to make things better. You have a kind of a deck builder mechanic with the cattle, but you're actually still using the mechanics of building the town and your actions that you go to can only be used by you and they're better than other people's actions, hopefully, depending on what you build them. You can recruit more people to where things benefit you more based on the spaces you go to. I cannot say enough good things about Great Western Trail. Now, Maracaibo is very good, and I'm eventually going to do a uh, comparison video of them, but 
at the time of shooting this. I haven't done it. I haven't played Maracaibo enough to really dive in and tell you which one I like better. But, but Great Western Trail is a phenomenal Western game, all about the cattle you know, trail, you know, it's Lonesome Dove, except you're not, nobody gets snake bit, spoiler from 1989, and then, uh, you know, it's just so good, like, I, let me know in the comments below what you love about Great Western Trail, because there was a lot of uproar, like, how did I not put Great Western Trail on this list yet, well, because here it is, number 17, Great Western Trail. Number 16, if you watched my Zolkin versus Teotihuacan video, you would know that Zolkin is higher on my list than Teotihuacan, which means that number 16 is Zolkin. It is such a good game. Now, I have really spruced my copy up. I painted the middle gear and the outer gears, uh, painted them gray, and then the middle gear has got a unique paint job that looks like one of those Mayan calendar with all the different blues and reds and yellows and golds and greens. It looks gorgeous, and I've also 3D printed pyramids that are based on the pyramids of the game to sit on top of those um the, on the pyramids themselves so when the thing spins it's a full 3d looking it looks gorgeous so that's not why i like the game though the reason i like the game is because it's a perfectly good game in which you set those workers out there and think well when do i pull them back do i pull them now do i wait do i wait do i wait now i need to pull them and i've waited long enough to where i get a much better action zolkin is such a good game it's the, one of those games that i heard about a lot when i was getting into gaming and thought well i'll eventually play it couldn't get my hands on it couldn't find it somebody was selling their copy i said i'll take it i am so glad i did number 16 zolkin go get this game number 15 is one of the most unique worker placement games that actually uses its theme and this theme gets done a lot but for some reason even though technically you could call the system in this game a loan that you pay off later it's not it's time travel that is anachrony anachrony is a gorgeous looking worker placement game based in a world in which you are you're you're the one planet or the one area is about to explode and you've got to get off planet and kind of raise and build your own city and it does this in a way in which you are, you have actions on the main board, which eventually will start to go away, and you'll have the actions that you have built in your city to make it better. The art style is like a Jadorowski's Dune. It looks incredible. 80s sci-fi art. Kind of, uh, it, it, I can't explain how good it looks. And now with the miniatures that you can get with the expansion, Anachrony is beautiful, but it deals with time travel, and it does it in such a way where you borrow something from the future. Well, later in your game, you have to send it back to the past. Yes, I know, that's just a lone mechanic. Doesn't matter. Your brain thinks it's time travel, and it works so well. So, Anachrony is one of the best thematic worker placement games of all time. Number 14 is The Colonist. This is one of the longest games I own besides one that's going to be higher up on the list. The Colonist is a six-hour uh, engine-building Euro worker placement game. Don't hear that as, as it's a dry game. It's not. It's not worker placement. It's worker movement. You have this air, this kind of city, this town, this, this world that really builds out. And each time you move your pawn onto an action space, you can do that action. Uh, they, they get better each era. There are three eras. You can technically play it in three two-hour sessions or three one-and-a-half-hour sessions if you're playing with two players and just do the three different eras. But once you play all three eras, you get to benefit from your engine building. It's one of the few games that I know of in which you build an engine and it pays off and it continues to pay off and it continues to sustain you and to get you points. I love The Colonist. It might be my favorite... Uh, yeah, I'm looking at my list. It is my favorite engine building game with the exception of one that we'll talk about in a minute because it's more of a tableau, but it is my favorite engine building game. It's so good. It's very long. We leave it on the table when we play it, but man, is it good. It's rewarding. It's rewarding. That's what. That's the best word you can say about The Colonist is it's rewarding. So number 14 is The Colonist. Number 13 one of the best two-player games of all time is Star Wars Rebellion. It is, I know the catchphrase that you've heard it before and you're going to hear it again, Star Wars in a box. And I mean the original trilogy. I don't mean the stuff that you can now forget because The Mandalorian is so good. I mean, it's Star Wars, the original trilogy, and Rogue One thrown in, in the box. Basically, you're zooming way out, whereas Imperial Assault, you're zoomed way in, X-Wing, you're zoomed in. You're zooming out all the way top level, and you're doing the entire Rebel... Uh, you're doing the entire rebellion, the fight, you know, the Civil War, 
the Galactic Civil War, they call it, you're doing that from a zoomed out perspective. You've got leaders and you're putting them in places on the board. The, the Empire is trying to find the rebels. It plays in a, an asymmetrical way. I cannot say enough good things about Rebellion. The ships that come with it, everything looks good. The pieces look amazing. The gameplay is so much fun. Battle is handled really smooth. Uh, Star Wars Rebellion is one of the best two-player games of all time. But Brian, we play it four-player. Good for you. You can play it four-player. It just misses something to me, and I'm sorry. I don't like it at four, but I love it at two. Go and play Star Wars Rebellion. Number 12 is a very good dice drafting game called Sagrada. You're building windows in the Sagrada Familia in Spain. It is a beautiful game because the dice are translucent. So when you put them in the window that you have this nice translucent, this nice window pane, it looks like stained glass. You're actually building what you say you're building. And in my review that I did three years ago now, I believe, I held up a, a jar of spaghetti sauce and said, it's like hiding vegetables inside of this like the commercials talk about because this hides an abstract game inside a beautiful theme i'm not one for just abstract games but if you slap a theme on it i love it this is a beautiful game love this game so so much fun um it's a great dice drafting game it's a good one to teach people as the rules are very strict but they're very simple to follow so sagrada beautiful game wonderful game number 12. Number 11 is one of my favorite games of all time. Obviously, that is so simple, but it is so good. It is Draftosaurus. If you've heard me talk about games before, you know I'm a sucker for Draftosaurus. I have lost Draftosaurus exactly one time, and I refuse to ever lose again. It's so good. You're going to draft a dinosaur out. You're going to put it on the board. Depending on where you put it, it scores points a certain way. So this one may be you put pairs of dinosaurs here. This one may be exactly three dinosaurs. This one might be uh, you put the exact same dinosaur in boom, 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 boom each time. You're going to do this twice, so there's six rounds and then six rounds, and then we flip over the board and we always play the front and the back sides together. There are two expansions that's coming. I cannot wait because Draftosaurus is that good. It's fast, it's quick, it's easy to play. Everyone I've ever showed this to loves this game. So if you're looking for something to slip in in a 10 minute time slot, Draftosaurus 100% do that. Number 10 is, we're zooming back in now in Star Wars, and that is Star Wars Imperial Assault, pre-app, okay? Now there's an app for it now. Didn't play a ton with the app, played some of the app, but um, pre-app, this game was so good. I miss it. I wish Imperial Assault would come back. Um, it just, it worked. It felt good. You're playing these kind of side characters that aren't part of the main cast, but of course you can get the main cast to help you out. You can play two games in the box. You get the skirmish, which is literally just two on one on, you know, one on one combat. And it got very popular with a very popular meta game and tournaments and all those sorts of things like that. But also there's the campaign and the campaign is one of the best campaign games there is it's just simply that good but it's also star wars so getting to do the fun stuff in star wars uh, with that sort of descent style it's so good you can now get this game it's still around it's not they're not printing new stuff for it, but it's still around and do yourself a favor you say but brian i don't have a group to play with good news there's an app that you can play the campaign against 100 percent. if you're a star wars fan and you've not picked up imperial assault you need to do yourself a favor and go do that right now. Number 10, Imperial Assault. Number nine, I played this on the cruise last year and I could not find it until about three months ago. And now it's still one of my favorite. I remember playing it that night on the cruise thinking this game is something special. I played it uh, when we got it in for the review and played it, played it, played it, played it, played it, played it, played it. Shown it to a ton of people. This is a power plant killer. This is a, uh, a light economic game killer. This is Smartphone Inc. It does what it does so well. It's clean, aesthetic. It looks like Apple made this game on purpose, like tongue in cheek Apple made this game. Uh, you get these little phone dividers to hold your stuff in and actually you move cubes from one area to another to show that you've built phones. You follow the phase of the game so perfectly well that you cannot get lost. You know what's coming. The best part is the cool mechanic for selecting actions. You get these panels with different apps on them and whatever you end up showing face up is what you have active for that round. Smartphone Inc. It handles itself in such a good way. It introduces a lot of new and innovative techniques to select actions, and it really plays so 
smart. There's never a moment where you go, what do we do this turn? It's, it's your following phases, and it works so well. Smartphone Inc. is a beautiful game that is so much fun to play. So it's number nine, Smartphone Inc. Number eight, I believe, is give or take my highest worker placement game, and that is Viticulture. Viticulture is so good. You're running a winery. Uh, this is Viticulture Second Edition, blah, 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 Essential Edition, Tuscany. Okay? Always playing with Tuscany, always playing Essential Edition. This is such a good game. Now, it's smooth, it's peaceful, you're running a winery. Yes, you can get blocked out for your actions, but you have the grande worker, which means you can go in someone else's spot. There are bonuses for taking actions. You're, you're going to plant these grapes, and you're going to harvest the grapes, and you're going to make wine, and that wine's going to age, and as it ages, you can sell it off to different customers, and it's just so smart. I love this game, and I love it because of how far it's come, right? Because the people who played the first edition who now play this and go, wow, this is so much better. If you like worker placement games, Viticulture, while it can be a little long, you know, and I will say this, it's like um, it's it's like a bottle rocket with a 10-foot fuse. It can take a long time to get to that moment, but when it goes, it whoosh, the game ends like that. When it starts to ramp up, people can score points very quickly. So, Viticulture, it's a fantastic worker placement game. It's peaceful, it's good, so so good. Viticulture. Number seven, this is why I said earlier I had a tableau, uh, excuse me, a, a, a engine builder that might be a little higher. Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars is such a good game. You are terraforming the planet Mars. There's a spatial element of the game onto the map of Mars in which you're putting out trees and you're putting out uh, cities and water tiles. And we've 3D printed some of these that look fantastic. But you're doing all this sort of stuff and then you're also playing card tableaus. You're getting a lot of points based on your cards and where these tags on the cards uh, translate to and all this sort of stuff. Terraforming Mars, I cannot say enough good things about it. It has its own accolades. Everybody has heard of this at least, and if they haven't, it's so good. Now, to the people who don't like it, it's usually because of the length, and if you play with four, it can stretch a little bit, but it's a perfect two-player game. It's phenomenal. It's even really good solo. It's one of the very few Euros I've ever played solo and be like, this is great. So, Definitely, definitely, definitely. If you don't have Terraforming Mars, you've heard the hype. The hype is real. Terraforming Mars is fantastic. Yes, it has some um, thinner pieces of paper for the, or thinner cardstock for the boards and things. Not the main board, but like your player board. But I love the fact that the cubes represent anything they're sitting on. I love the fact that the money represents anything you're sitting on. And that silver, gold, and copper just looks good. So Terraforming Mars, number seven. Number six, I love games that teach you stuff. And someone made a snooty comment one time when I did a, a, comment, a, a video comparing this and other games like it about, oh, the Cold War wasn't that important, really? Oh, you think that's so important? Uh, I don't know history, but I'm going to comment like a troll. The Cold War is one of the most important moments in all human history, not just U.S. history. Brian, why do you say that? Because we could have nuked ourselves. We could kill ourselves off the map completely. So... We don't want to do that, which is why it's important to figure out where cool heads prevail. And you see the experts like Reagan and the meeting of the minds with Gorbachev and all that sort of stuff. And we see Twilight Struggle, a two-player game in which you play the Cold War. It's a GMT war game that's not just about fighting. In fact, you don't want to fight. It's abstracted out under card play, a card-driven game they call this. Um, you're going to pick a card, you're going to play that card, you can either use it for the event that's on the card with a nice little historical picture and information about the event, or you can use it for the points up in the top left. However, if I'm the American side and I play a Soviet card for points, they get to do the action on that card, so it's a push and pull. Everything's a tug of war in this game, much like that entire 60, yeah, 50 plus year period of the Cold War. It's a push and pull, tug of war, pushing till there's mush, always trying to do what you can to weasel out control and spheres of influence. Twilight Struggle is so good. And the beautiful thing is, you say, Brian, I don't have anybody to play this game, and no one's gonna play this with me, but I've always wanted to. The app is fantastic. The app looks like the game, the app thinks like the game, and the app plays like the game. 
I love Twilight Struggle. I, it's one of the few games I get a little bit emotional. I don't mean like throw the table angry. I think, man, how amazing is it to look back over history and see these events that really happened when that wall came down and the freedom between. It's so amazing. So, Twilight Struggle, it's, it's something special. So, number five. Here we go. Bottom five, top five, whatever you want to call them. Number five has a caveat, okay? Number five is Time Stories. Brian, don't, don't you not like some of the Time Stories? Yes, but Time Stories itself was such a special moment for us when we played Asylum, especially. And there's been quite a few that were really, 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 really good. But Time Stories, when we played Asylum, and that moment happens in Asylum, because remember, this is before all the Escape Room in a Box games. In fact, this is before, uh, in some places in the country, Escape Rooms were all over. When you do that puzzle, and you realize that you're not crazy. You got it right, and it works. You go, boom! You, you're just so happy. I, I jumped up from the table and exploded with excitement. You said, well, now this happens all the time with unlock games. You just get puzzles like this all the time. Of course, but this is before that. And so seeing time stories play out, and we've played every single time stories, and we will continue to play every single time stories because it brought a group of friends together who we, we have so much in common, so much just we cherish now, and we're so thankful for this group of friends. And... I, I, Time Stories is just such a fun experience. If, if you haven't played it, I do like the original system better than the new system, but if you haven't played it and you hear the negative reviews, understand there was a reason why everyone flipped out and loved the first couple and then some of the later ones and then some of the last ones, but not the very last of the White Series. Time Stories will always have a special place in my heart and game. Number four, Scythe. Yep, it's been up here every single time you see a review and you see this corner. Oh, it's out of frame right now. But Carla's game, this is her number one game. Maybe number one, number two, and you'll, you'll see it's going to fight with number three for me. Um, Scythe is just so good. It's, it's one of the best themed games of all time. This is 1919 plus or whatever it is, 1910 plus. It's this weird kind of like steampunky uh, World War One sort of fight, but it's an economic game all about, you know, you're, you're trying to, yes, you have armies that you can fight, but you're more about, you can get points through peaceful means, you can get points through gaining resources, you can get points through upgrading all your stuff. I love the iconography in Scythe, where green stuff you get, red stuff you pay. You can make the green stuff better, you can make the red stuff cheaper. You can get these nicely detailed mechs and the heroes that you have. The theme is amazing, the mechanics just work so solid, so sound. And if you haven't played the Rise of Fenris campaign, oh my gosh, go get that and play it. It's so good. Scythe is one of the best games that has ever been made, that will ever be made. It will hold up. It will be an evergreen. It will be a permanent top uh, 10 for most people, but definitely top 50 for almost every single person who's played it. Sure, there's some outliers, but Scythe is so good. I can never say enough good things about Scythe. So, number four, Scythe. Number three, it, <laughs> I'll be honest, number three, number two, and number one will fight each other and claw for the top. And it's kind of like a Jacob and Esau pulling the heel sort of deal, right? Number three is Mansions of Madness second edition with that app. I remember watching when this came out and they revealed how this was going to work because we had played first edition and liked it, but didn't like the hours of setup. And remember seeing that app come out and we're like, what is this? We got it. Played the first five missions almost back to back to back to back to back, except the first one that was the one that was really long. We played that actually almost a year later, but the four we played them over and over again, and we have never been disappointed. We have never had a bad Mansions of Madness second edition experience. They keep getting better by adding interesting mechanics, whether it be a boat that's sinking or an airship that you're in, a train that you're on where the map actually builds like a train. You might be exploring Innsmouth or the Miskatonic University. You might be in the jungles. It's just so good. It, it's the best game in the mansions, in the Arkham Horror Files of Fantasy Flight. It's the best they've ever done. I would love them to never stop making content for it, honestly. But I would also love to see them take this system and do an Eldritch Horror second edition where you're zoomed out, but you're playing with the map, kind of like Journeys in Middle Earth. Mansions of Madness, if you don't like Lovecraft, you're still going to like Mansions of Madness. It's that good. The combat's fun. The exploring's fun. The puzzles. It has actual puzzles in the app that you try to solve. It's just so good. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. I will always 
love this game as well. So that is number three, Mansions of Madness, second edition. Number two is Twilight Imperium, fourth edition. Yes, third edition was awesome. It's what got me into the game. That huge coffin, just looking at it, I loved it. Fourth edition came along, tightened up a lot of mechanics, and now that the expansion's out, it's just better. Yes, it takes eight hours. Yes, it takes up an entire table. Yes, you will get angry with your friends and they will get angry with you, but at the end of it, you will realize that you've had one of the best times in gaming ever. You will talk about the games that you've had for years to come. How do I know this? Because we still do this. We still talk about specific games of Twilight Imperium. Well, you did this, and we could remember that time that you came around and we did this. Remember the time you literally flipped out, left in, in the middle of the night, and, and yelled at the other guys and stormed out, and then you realized that you were parked in front of the guy who <laughs> you just yelled at and had to come back in and tell him to move his car? What? The game is so much fun. The mechanics are solid. It's got some Euro elements. It's got some Marathrash elements. Christian Peterson, it, it, I want more. I, I don't want this to be the end of Twilight Imperium because we got the expansion, but my gosh, it's so good. I love this game. I love it. I love it. I love the universe. I love everything about it. You've never played it. You think, Brian, I can't get a six-hour game to the table, eight-hour game to the table. I understand that, but if you can get in a game at some point in your life, you may not love it. You may think, it's uh, this is kind of long, but you will remember, and those of you who are in the side with me, you will remember it forever and you will love it because of the experience it gave you. So Twilight Imperium, fourth edition, I've never had a bad time with this game. It's exciting, we look forward to playing it. So if you can get in a game of it, do it. Twilight Imperium, it's the best. Second best, or the best, or third best, depending on what day it is. Which brings us to number one. You've heard me talk about this game a lot. You've seen it in my background. I even did a magical video explaining the rules one time. I love the Old West. The Old West is one of my favorite themes of all time and don't get enough good games in the Old West. I love history, I love good mechanics, and I love sandbox games, which is why number one is Western Legends. With all the expansions or without all the expansions, I don't care. It's just good. I love that you can go and mine for gold and win like that. I love that you can go and gamble and win like that. I love that you can go and uh, philander, I guess is the word, <laughs> I don't know what it is, and win like that. I love everything about this game. I love the fights are handled by playing cards. I love that you can go and play poker. I love it even better with Annie Up, and I'm really excited about Blood Money, but I will never not play with Annie Up just because it adds so much to the game having that second area i love the combos that strategy that strategize from you know what now this one's better to get cattle so i'll go get cattle and do this again western legends is one of those games that carla usually always wins at somehow it's not her style of game really but she always kills and cleans house with but western legends is an unforgettable game i always enjoy it I, i've never won I, I won one time and I still love it every time. It's so much fun. The theme is there. The, the mechanics are solid. It looks good on the table. It, it's just so much fun to play. If you love the West, if you loved Red Dead Redemption 2, or 1 for that matter, um, get it with Annie up, and you will see. You can rob a train. You can take the train. You can go and find these events that will pop up on the map. You can fight a bear, for goodness sakes. Um, you can raid the bandits. You can fight the bandits. You can you can uh, steal. You can rob a bank. You can you can steal from that person. You can rob that person. You can duel that person. You can arrest that person. You can become an outlaw, or you can become a, a, a person of justice, a lawman. You know something like that. It, it covers historical characters. Uh, Al Swearingen is going to be in it. Uh, Johnny Ringo is in it. You know, uh, Curly Bill is in it. Well, bye. I'm your Huckleberry. Of course, he's in it too. So I mean, go. Get Western Legends if you love the West. I love this game so much, so much, so much, so much. But the top three, they will call their way against each other on a different day. But this is how I've been feeling for the last several months. So that is my top 100 games of all time. If you haven't watched them all yet, it's about 25, 20, 21, 20. It's about an hour's worth of content, 80 minutes worth of content. 
If you've watched all 100, let me know where you line up on the comments below. If you're just watching this video, I totally understand. Let me know in the comments where I line up with you and what you agree with and what you disagree with because I feel like we'll agree on a lot and I feel like we'll disagree on a lot. But let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this Top 100 Games as much as I've enjoyed talking about my Top 100 Games. So I am Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. And until next time, we will see you.